Right, so today I'm going to go through this massive box. Well, it's not massive, it's a short box really, but it's got lots of stuff piled on top and it's got lots of stuff down the side of it. Uh, yeah, and it's in a really bad condition. It's not been tucked in or anything, that, that box. I think it was just a junk box that somebody gave me. But anyway, let's have a look what's inside it, eh? All right, first off, I've got this Green Lantern Circle of Fire. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> yes, I don't remember it at all. <laughs> Let's go a little bit forward, I think. There we are, that's a little bit better. Yeah, no memories whatsoever, and it seems to, um, yeah, Green Lantern teams up with a few other guys um, from the DC Universe along the way. So he teams up with Atom in this one, uh, teaming up with Power Girl in this one, and I think they're different Green Lanterns as well. They're not the actual, yeah, not the Earth Green Lanterns, are they? I'm not sure what Green Lanterns they are. This one's an Earth Green Lantern, of course. Uh, oh, Green Lantern and Green Lantern. So yeah, obviously it looks like Carl Rayner. I'm not sure who the other one is. Uh, these are from 2000. Right, Green Lantern and Firestorm the Nuclear Man. Green Lantern and Adam Strange. Wow, that's a funky looking Green Lantern. And uh, Adam Strange looks uh, rather, rather distraught in that picture there. Uh, yeah, and part two, Circle of Fire. So, not too sure what went on in that one. Uh, yeah, long time since I've read it, so I've got absolutely no memory of it whatsoever. Right, Green Lantern and Flash, Faster Friends. Seems to be some kind of uh, time thing going on, maybe. You've got a modern day Carl Rayner Green Lantern, you've got the original Alan Scott Green Lantern, and then you've got probably uh, Wally West at this period. Wally West and. Um, Jay Garrick. There you go, part one and two, Faster Friends. Right, this little batch here I showed off in a uh, competition video recently. Someone wanted to see 25 random kind of comic books, and so I just grabbed the batch of books off the top of this, uh, of this box, really. And uh, yeah, so it was Black Lightning Year One. Six parter from two thousand and nine. I want you to help take back Suicide Slum. Yeah, Suicide Slum's in uh, Metropolis, isn't it? Uh, Black Light in the Metropolis uh, based hero. Quite a possibility. Was it Je Jefferson High, isn't it, the name of the university or the, the college that he uh, has affiliation with? I wonder if that's meant to be in, in Metropolis. There's a free comic book day. Aliens. Nighthawk. Supreme power with Nighthawk. Yeah, when I went through this, I couldn't remember the guy's name. Kyle, it's definitely Kyle something or other. Yeah, all I can think of now is Kyle Rayner. <laughs> it's not Kyle Rayner. Uh, but it's definitely Kyle of some description. But he's got a different costume on. Nighthawk. Actually, I'm not sure if I did go through this, this little pack, actually. Nighthawk. I think I went through like a new Defenders or the last Defenders and Nighthawk was in it and I'm assuming this must have carried on from there because that's the new costume that he looked like he was debuting at the end of the new de uh, the last Defenders. Uh, Steve Dillon Art, so you can't go wrong with that. Get the feeling, uh, I've forgotten his name again now, Nighthawk innit, Nighthawk. <laughs> yeah, I get a feeling his name might have been Kyle Richmond. Right, the ferret, I've got no idea what his alter ego is. <laughs> From the pages of Protectors by Malibu Comics. The ferret. Yeah, like a, definitely a bargain basement Wolverine. Although I'm sure Wolverine wasn't the first kind of feral uh, 
superhero, though they might have been though, I'm not too sure. Yeah, kind of like that kind of feral, like uh, savage kind of superhero. Uh, maybe he was the, the, the start of that trope. Uh, the last defenders. And I'll tell you, there's the Night Hawk. I think it's like a. I think he was trying to sort of set up a new team in this one. He seems to have different lineups on each each cover. So you have got Ghost Rider, She Hulk, and uh, Colossus in that one. Nice powerhouse team. Um, this one has got Paladin and some other people. <laughs> uh, is that bloke a giant? I can't quite tell if he's a giant or not. It looks like he's got an A on his chest, and so maybe he's on like Atlas or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I have no idea. Uh, Right, and here he looks like he's he's getting rid of the old costume. And here we have him in a new costume, which I think is what I showed you on that other little uh, six-parter that I showed you a second ago. And it looks like he's settled on his team, other than She-Hulk. Yeah, I saw him before, and I was thinking he was something like Jin or something like that, like a genie. And now I'm wondering if he's Dervish for some reason. For some reason Dervish comes to mind. And like he's got little jets on his boots, and there's a phrase, the wh a whirling dervish, isn't there? I wonder if he's some kind of whirling dervish, but <laughs> I'm not too sure. And the bloke on the horse, I've got no idea who he is. Demon Rider, maybe? Let's go with Demon Rider, because he's got horns on his head, and his horse looks kind of demonic as well. So, yeah, if that's right, it'll be a miracle. <laughs> right, Infinite Halloween Special, 13 Towers of Terror. Another thing I've been talking about on my videos as well, you may have heard, is I keep thinking I've got some Mandrake art. And I've got a memory of buying some Mandrake art off of a website. And I've got, I remember it coming, I can't remember what it looked like. And I remember it came with a little sketch of, um, of Spectre. And now I'm convinced I dreamt it. <laughs> I, I, like, I couldn't remember if I could actually remembered it or if I was, you know, was I remembering a dream. It's really weird. <laughs> Yeah, I am quite weird anyway. But yeah, now I've kind of been looking around upstairs for where it could possibly be. And it's like, there isn't anything. And I think to myself, well, I can't remember what this art looked like exactly. Or what page it was from. I had a vague idea of it being a Spectre page. But then I thought to myself, these art pages are quite big, aren't they? Not small. So I think to myself, I must have just dreamt it. I must have dreamt it and then, like, remembered the dream and thought it was real. <laughs> Because I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, even when I was think even back in the period when I thought I might have bought it, I'm sure it would have been very expensive even back then. And, uh, yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> I kept hoping that some uh, Mandrake, original Mandrake art was going to show up upstairs, like, by magic. But I just thought that I had bought some. But now I'm convinced I was just remembering a dream that I had. <laughs> oh, dear, how sad. All right, yeah, I've got some of this Book of Fate. I showed these off as well in that... Uh, um, contest video I was doing. I've got numbers 3 to 10. But I kind of think to myself that I was already collecting the Book of Fate at one point. So I wouldn't be surprised if these all come up again uh, <laughs> in a few months' time when I, when I find whatever box they may be in. That's if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, I might not have collected it because I'm not too sure though. Um, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Perhaps I dreamt that as well. Oh dear. <laughs> it's like the other day on one of my videos, I was going for my Superman, fully expecting it to show the whole death of Superman. Because I was sure that I'd started collecting it prior to the death of Superman, because I knew it was coming up and I wanted to find out about it. And I don't have the death of Superman, I have it starting from the rise of the Superman, which is like after he died and the people who replaced him. And I was kicking myself, I was like, I can't believe I haven't got that. I was so sure I had that. But uh, I didn't. Right, Emerald Dawn 2, part 1, part 2. This is um, the story of him being taught by uh, Sinestro, isn't it? I'm not sure how, how much of it was shown in the, in the original stories, whether it like showed him being taught by Sinestro. In the early days of, of the comic. I think I've got now like a compendium of like early uh, Green Lantern. And I still can't remember. Or whether like Sinestro being his tutor and friend was like something that was uh, retconned and added on later on. I'm not too sure. Because that kind of relationship seems a bit too nuanced 
for um, <laughs> for DC back in the 50s or whatever, 40s, whenever it was. I think it was uh, 50, no, 60s, either, I don't bloody know. Whenever, 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 silver, whenever the Silver Age was. Right, uh, Green Lantern Emerald Knights, I think it's 60s. <laughs> See, I know nothing, I'm terrible. I don't, I don't know the bloody ages or anything. Right, there we go, uh, Green Lantern, uh, Brightest Day, Blackest Night. Little uh, prestige kind of format book. Okay, Justice League Quarterly, number one. Justice League Quarterly number two. Really to find a better box for these. I might have to buy a new box for these actually because that tatty old box. Yeah, I should take them out of that tatty old box. Give them a nice clean box. Justice League Quarterly three. Maybe use that tatty box for like uh, current, current comics to sit them up in like ones that I'm, you know, to read list kind of thing. Uh, Justice League Quarterly number four. Justice League Quarterly number five, a nice chunky read these ones, 80 pages. I think they all contain like individual stories, which is always good. I do love a self-contained story. Uh, yeah, three brand new solo stories starring Paragel, Blue Beetle and the Global Guardians. Um, quite a lot of these Justice League Quarterlies actually. I'm guessing by the name they came out quarterly, but I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> right, Justice League Quarterly number eight. Number nine. Early 90s action, 92 that one. Number 10. Spring 93. And we have summer 93, number 11. Hunters of the Hunted. Number 12, with the all new conglomerate. Maximum Attraction, I think that's Maxima decides that um, Captain Atom will be uh, a good partner for her. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wish I was a good partner for Maxima, she's quite hot, but uh, yeah, you know, not really, because I have a partner already, and she's lovely. <laughs> anyway, Mignola, yeah, I think Maxima would be a bit too demanding, to be honest. <laughs> she's looking for the, the uh, perfection in man, isn't she, to, to ensure that her, her race has beautiful, healthy, powerful babies, which, uh, yeah, I don't think I'll be, uh, I don't think I'll pass muster on that. Right, <laughs> Justice League Quarterly 16. Uh, Justice League Quarterly 17. This is uh, finishing up Winter 94. I think that's all of them. Final fight for the Global Guardians. All right, got our first issue of Justice League Unlimited. Here's a cool one. JLA, the island of Dr. Moreau. Got a Justice League America annual number 10, Legends of the Dead Earth. Okay, this is an interesting cover. I'm surprised I don't remember it at all. JLA versus Predator. Although it looks like everyone's been turned into predators. That's not how the uh, predators normally operate. But they changed their modus operandi. <laughs> Normally they just kill people. They don't like usurp them and turn them into images of themselves. Got a little four part here, JLA year one. So it must be a re, oh, that's right, it's probably a retelling of like the first time they got together, it's got to be. But they retconned it, didn't they? So no Batman was involved with the year one uh, gathering, no Superman was involved, apart from obviously it looks like he's here in this one. But and maybe, maybe it's Batman, I'm not too sure he's wearing dark colours and he's got dark hair, well, so Superman got dark hair, but he's got Superman on the chair, but it looks like it could be Batman sitting on it, I don't know. Oh, it could have been Superman in uh, disguise. I'm not too sure, but yeah, that was the that was what was decided was the actual original JLA. I don't think that lasted though. I think they decided the original JLA in the end. Uh, it was, certainly wasn't triumph in the first um, JLA appearance. I think they made it. Um, I think they, a bit Batman and Superman may have been added to the uh, to the roster. Tales of the Green Lantern Corps, annual number two. Don't appear to have annual number one unless it's somebody else. I can't believe I've got 
these books are all in like, nice books, and I can't believe I've got them in that crappy box. Uh, Towers of the Green Lantern Corps, number three. Right, and I've actually got some old Green Lanterns in here as well. Uh, yeah, because I don't think all my Green Lanterns are in the in the same place. This is number 104. It's hard burying a friend and knowing you'll never see him again. I don't think I've got too many like nice old ones, to be honest. Uh, it's cool that I've got a couple of these ones where Green Lantern and Green Arrow were teaming up with each other. I highly doubt I've got any of the, the key issues, though. In fact, I don't remember these ones. <laughs> 111. Uh, 114. Right, this next one, I'm pretty sure I remember buying this as a kid. Uh, yeah, and I like I like this one. I thought this was a really cool... Or did I mess around with the camera there? Yeah, I thought this one was a really cool cover. Fly, Lantern, fly! Or you'll fall to your death! I can't! I've lost the powering! Oh dear. <laughs> right, number 133. Adam Strange has got his own eight-part story in it. Um... No number on this one. Is there... Am I going blind? Or is this some kind of weird... Elseworlds? So I don't know. 175 this one is. So what? yeah, big jump. 133 to 175. And there is definitely no number on it. It's got April 84, but there's no number. That's got to be uh, rare, isn't it? Or did they all happen like that in that time? Very strange. Is that Carcharadon? I feel that might be Carcharadon, that, that chap there. Right, now this next one, I definitely remember buying this as a kid. And this is one of my favourites. I love this one. Mind you, it's not that, I wasn't that young actually, 84. So I was still, yeah, I was a teenager. But I just love, I love, the, dead, I love the demolition team. <laughs> Even though they never got much juice. I bought them, and there was in this comic. You know what it's like in your early comics, if you, if you see a character you love, yeah, you end up just like, ah, oh, yeah, these are the best. And then they come in to destroy green, um, Ferris aircraft, a uh, house sent off to a, like the Guardians tell him he can't protect his friends, he's got to go to the other side of the galaxy and save this planet that's about to blow up. And they say, Look, there's a few people here, you know, they, there's some property damage going on, but look, this whole planet's going to blow up and kill everybody. And uh, yeah, it was a big um, decision for how, and he was, he felt, you know, traumatized by it. But anyway, in the very last panel of this of this story, um, there's this character called the Predator, who it turns out later on is, um, is like a, um, you know, that star sapphire lives inside uh, Carol Ferris and is like based on her emotions, while the Predator is like also inside, is the deeper, darker emotions, and he comes out to save her, he takes down this demolition team in an awesome battle, oh, it's just like, oh yeah, I love this character, this, this guy is the best, and look how, look how awesome he is. He's got silver trim, he's got a, uh, a dagger, he's got a blinking axe, he's got claws on his hands, he's got little wings. He just, oh, he was awesome. It's like a character, I mean, I, I just wish that he hadn't turned up to be like a, a villainous kind of alter ego of Carol Ferris, because he just looks the nuts, drawn by Dave Gibbons. I did a role play. I used to do a role playing game called Villains of Vigilantes, and my friend who I'd lent this comic to and who loved the character as well, he actually created... A predator. He drew. He drew this picture uh, for his little character sheet, and like we actually had the predator as one of our uh, player characters in our villains and vigilantes campaign. And he's just so cool. I wish someone at DC would bloody well write a you know separate him from Carol Ferris, give him his own story, or somehow have it that like a normal guy gets possessed by the Predator, not possessed, but merged, so he's got the Predator's powers and, you know, or maybe you, yeah, maybe you just summon him, like a Hulk kind of thing, he just summons him when he needs him, because that is just such a cool bloody costume, one of the, one of the best, one of the best characters, that Predator, I love him. <laughs> and his fight with the demolition team is just awesome. Uh, even though the demolition team hardly get ever used again, but I quite like them as well. They're really kind of funky villains, really sort of quite daft. But I think I might have two of these now. I'm not too sure. No, I can't remember. I was reading it the other day. I think I might have been reading it online now, actually. But yeah, and then when he finally gets back from saving the other planet, obviously, Carol is not best pleased. Let's just say, not best pleased at all. And I think he decides to quit, actually, being Green Lantern. He says, you know, I can't, you know, I love Carol. I can't, you know, give up 
protecting my friends, and he ends up passing it on to John Stewart, I believe. Uh, 182, so 181 is missing, and I think he passed it over to John Stewart. Uh, right, let me skip forward. Oh, don't be like that. Don't stick to that one, you rotten thing. Right, yeah, 192. Got to pay 45p for that. I don't know what it was I bought it though. All right, 193. No bags and balls on these ones. Oh, what's going on there? I could leave you here to die, Green Lantern, but I think I'll kill you instead. It looks like Hal Jordan's really going to town on John Stewart in that one. I don't know why. I know that I think he, he gave him his power at the time. And he's looking like he's a bit parallaxy. <laughs> at last, the power is mine again. I dare say he had a bit of a rough time with John Stewart. I'm not quite sure what happened there. And then we have an all new Green Lantern. Guy Gardner, but I don't think this is his first time as Green Lantern, surely. I think he must have been Green Lantern uh, previously. Um, yeah, I'm sure he would have been. Right. I'm all out of breath of excitement. Right, now this one, this is uh, John Stewart in his own title for a while. Green Lantern Mosaic. I think it's like a 12 part or 8 part. I've got to say, I bought it because I like Green Lantern's full stop. And, you know, it was just, this story just didn't do it for me. This story was, I just found it really boring. Nothing really much happened in it. Mosaic was like a, someone had stolen like a crossword, not crossword, but a, a, a patchwork um, sort of squares from various different planets across the galaxy and like plopped them all together in a mosaic in like a, a you know, like a, uh, almost like a continental quilt, like a crazy quilt kind of pattern. Like so you know, just like a square of one thing, a square of another thing, all next to each other, all different alien places, um, including one from Earth, all inhabiting this this world. And so he was kind of like being the law on this mosaic planet, basically, uh, trying to keep the disparate people um, from, you know, warring with each other, for clashing with each other. Um, but I don't know, it just, to me, it just, it was a chore to read it, unfortunately, because I think the idea behind it was really good. But I don't know, it just seemed like it was nowhere near as exciting and interesting as it should have been, put it that way. That's all I can say about it. Maybe if I ever get around to reading it again, um, I may have a different opinion, we'll see. But uh, it goes on for a bit longer than I thought. So number 12, oh no, is this the last one? No, two more. Number 13, the only one with a bag and board on it. And number 14, so that's the whole of the Mosaic run, which, um, yeah, had potential, failed to live up to it. Secret Origins, number 18, starring the Golden Age Green Lantern and Creeper. Secret Origins, Green Lantern and Poison Ivy. For some reason someone's written Gaiman in, in pen on the corner of that bag. Is this written by Neil Gaiman? I don't think so. It says down here Gaiman and Buckingham. So yeah, maybe Neil Gaiman was responsible for poison, the Poison Ivy story in it. This is back in 89. Could it have been some of his early work in in, the, in DC? Uh, Green Lantern Annual number three. Green Lantern Annual number four. <laughs> Green Lantern Annual number five. Uh, Green Lantern plus the Ray, number one. Green Lantern Silver Surfer. I'm sure I'd already had one of these already. Yeah, I think I did it. I think there was a Silver Surfer Green Lantern uh, the other way round. Yeah, and then there was a Green Lantern Silver Surfer, yeah. I think they had a way, of, I think they did that kind of thing then. Uh, DC Comic presents Green Lantern. Yeah, this is the tribute to Julie Schwartz um, issue. They did that with a lot of them because so Julie Schwartz is the, he's the, he's the, basically he's the Stan Lee of DC pretty much. He was the editor. I think he did a fair bit of writing as well, but um, he was responsible for overseeing the Silver Age. The uh, introduction of a new Green Lantern as a space cop. Uh, introduction of... Um, Atom, Hawkman, uh, the new Flash, uh, the JLA, I think he oversaw the JLA being created as well. So a very important person in the history of DC Comics. 
Yeah, and just seeing on the cover there, Boland, it says, after Kane. So this is obviously a takeoff of an old um, Kane cover. Bob Kane. <laughs> is it Bob Kane? <laughs> I really have a terrible memory. Right, Green Lanterns and Sentinel, Heart of Darkness. Of course, Sentinel was what um, uh, Alan Scott became, isn't it? Alan Scott? I'm getting, yeah, I suppose it's Alan Scott. But yeah, the original Green Lantern. Yeah, he became Sentinel. Uh, <clears throat> his powers, I think they changed the origin of his powers or they introduced a different origin to his powers. They saying here, a daughter lost. Uh, so I wonder if this is when um, Jade was killed. Of course, Jade was his daughter, her brother, Obsidian. And uh, I'm not sure if it's still coming, but it was the, the, the mother of uh, of Jade was uh, Rose and Fawn, wasn't it? Um, yeah, because back in the Golden Age, um, yeah, they had a, a relationship. But uh, it was a bit awkward because Rose was a good person and uh, the fawn side of her was a villain. So it made it awkward. I think I've done these out of turn. I did a little batch of four of JLA year one a while back. These obviously should have uh, been running behind them. So it looks like it's a, a slightly longer run than just a four-parter. This guy looks like he's stealing body parts from the JLA. That's horrible. He's got Green Lantern's arm. He's got Flash's legs. Oh, he's got he's got Martian Manhunter's eyes. I've just realised, and I'm guessing he's got um, the Canary cry from uh, so the larynx or whatever of uh, Black Canary. It's quite a nasty little uh, creation. I think they got their bits back though. Looking at the rest of the uh, run. Okay, nine. I think this is a twelve parter. Ten fallen hero. So fallen friend, I said fallen hero for making up my own story there. Justice for all, like the Justice Society rather than the uh, Justice League. Obviously, it's retelling like early stories. Maybe this was a crossover at some point. They did have a habit of Earth One and Earth Two getting together, didn't they? Okay, from two thousand and four, Justice League Elite. I have to say, I've. Completely forgotten about these guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, Green Arrow, Flash, some other people. Is that Manitou Raven, maybe? That could be Manitou Raven, I'm not too sure. I've got a vague idea, no, looking at his hand. I was thinking for Megan, he might be the tattooed man. And is that Katana in a uh, different costume? Mm, yeah, I have no idea who all these people are. Nope, not your daddy's Justice League. This is true. My daddy never read Justice League. <laughs> right. uh, okay. I think this is one of those proactive attempts at uh, a Justice League, like Justice League Extreme and uh, all that kind of thing. Manchester Black is back. He's quite famous from um, one of the animated movies, isn't he? Manchester Black. Yuck. He's looking... Uh, He's looking like he's had better days. He looks quite fine and fettled from his smile there. But it's just something about that picture. It looks a bit off. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I think it's the fact his head's been cracked open like a bloody soft-boiled egg. I think that might be what it is. Yeah, thinking about it now. <laughs> Miss Morphine. Undercover, under siege. It's a new costume for Green Arrow there, isn't it? I suppose that's, that's his Justice League Elite costume, where he's doing more uh, covert operations. Yeah, this Justice League Elite looks to have been a 12-parter. Nine. Ten. Black Plague. Dream a little dream of me, saying there. So is that, that Manchester black guy again? I'm not too sure. I think he likes to smoke fags, didn't he? Uh, that means something different in America. Uh, cigarettes. Smoke cigarettes. <laughs> I think smoking fags in America means shooting gay people, doesn't it? I'm not too sure. Let's not go there. Don't do that either. Whatever you do, it's wrong. Uh, yeah, smoking cigarette. I do babble, don't I? Right, Justice League, or sorry, formerly known as the Justice League. Here we go again. Yeah. 
Yeah, how many of those are dead now? Come on, Blue Beetle and Elongate your man are dead, aren't they? Oh, and Sue Divney, she's dead as well. <laughs> oh dear. These happy-go-lucky, cheerful, fun comics. And uh, yeah, and then people get killed. Number four. Hey, look, it's a girl. Yeah, but she's on fire. Who cares? It's a girl. <laughs> Is she uh, some kind of villains con convention or something? It does look like villains. It looks a bit like Atomic Skull. That one over there looks like Killer Croc. The rest of them, uh, total Z listers. Oh, that could be Clayface there. Interesting. Manga Khan attacks. He was the alien who was all about uh, capitalism, wasn't he? Everything was a sale. Everything was, what can he do to, to sell it? Oh, this was a six-parter. This one, formerly known as the Justice League. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that, all right? So that was easy. And Blue Beetle was going, uh, because there's three more giant robots around them. If you've taken out one giant robot, there's three more there. All right, looks like I've got some old Aquaman. This looks like an old one. No, I'm not sure what year this is. 25 cents. It ain't that old. It just looks like uh, it looks like it's old. That's all. Action. So adventure comics. Aquaman, King of the Seven Seas, number 441. Then we have 445. So this has got to be after 60 because Creeper came around in 68. So it's definitely after that. It's 30 cent comic anyway. So I don't know, maybe 80s, maybe 80s, I reckon. Um, right, then we seem to have, oh, that's a shame. Hmm. Aquaman, three of five, Mirror's Revenge. And that seems to be the only one of that one I have, at least here. And then we've got an Aquaman run for 92. And I don't have number one. That's uh, annoying and surprising. Uh, num oh, there's a couple missing actually. Number two, number three. Then we're missing that number four. Go straight to number five. Well, maybe I should make this a little list about these. See if I can fill these little gaps. Uh, six. Die, Manta, die. Got tears in his eyes. I reckon is this the one where after he meant to have killed his wife and uh, child, he's got revenge written on that one there. Uh, Aquaman versus Aquaman. It's quite a cool cover. I've seen that one a few times before. Is that Batman looking over the proceedings there? Eco Wars Part One of Two. Guest starring the Sea Devils. Looks like some pollution's gone on, and uh, the Sea Devils are the kind of guys that stick up when uh, pollution's going on in the sea, aren't they? And in this one, drowning. Aquaman is drowning. I think there's something wrong with the water. I think the Eco Wars has affected the water, and he can no longer breathe it. So it's got a little bit crumpled, number 11, and it's got a, put it in a bag, and it's got a corner blinking turn on it as well. Dear me. Right, number 12. Number 13, In the Claws of the Scavenger. That appears to be the last one I have of that run. Then we got a four-parter, Time and Tide. Just in there raw, no bags and balls. Oh, such a terrible boy. <laughs> I shouldn't be allowed to play with comics if I don't put bags and balls on them. I am a foolish boy, and as a result, this number four cover is looking a little bit like, oh yeah, it's, yeah, not more than a little bit, like it's coming away. It has come away. Never mind. <laughs> right, we've got another Aquaman run from 94, Peter David, uh, 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 sorry, not Arp, uh, story. This is quite a long run, I believe. Oh, this is the one. He's got a hat, he's got two hands. Not any longer. That's where he loses his hand. <laughs> and then the, uh, he starts up with uh, working out what kind of hook he wants on his hand. This one's got damage cover as well. Dear me. Tut, tut, tut. That's become very torn, that cover has. Never mind. Aquaman versus Superboy. Surf's up. 
And he starts going for a selection of different hooks. It's like a harpoon hook in this one. And here he's fighting Lobo. Well, obviously, he's got a hook of his own, hasn't he? Hook on a chain. Hooked. Still favouring the harpoon hook there. And we've got some crazy Mignola art. Mignola. I also might start calling him Mignola for I'm doing the G silently. I've got no idea why I've started doing that and whether it's true or not. But <laughs> it should be Mignola. Uh, let's just go with Mignola. Mignola! It's my old mate Mignola, isn't it? Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah. Deadline. Hanging by that's the name of that villain, Deadline. I can never remember his name. But you see, he's got the new hook here. The new, the new hook hand. <laughs> Little green in the gills. Here's Dolphin. Apparently she started off way back in the 70s or something. And uh, yeah, and then she wasn't used again. And then she was reused in this run. And then I think later on she gets married to Aqualad, who was um, Tempest. And uh, has a baby. And then she and her baby get killed. I think in like... Um, one of the various crises is this, this is, and then they come back during the Black Lanterns, I think, yeah, and then obviously then died again, and uh, after another bunch of crises, this is, this is, it didn't affect them, and they're still dead apparently. They didn't come back in the crisis, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is. Uh, yeah, they're just dead, which is a shame because she was nice. I liked her. Uh, <laughs> I like most characters. I can't say there's a character I want dead. I don't think so. Dolphin uncovered. In the coils of the ocean master. Yeah, okay. don't call him Aqualad anymore. That's when he he starts doing magic, then he? he becomes Tempest, becomes like a an Atlantean magician or sorcerer, say not magician. Doesn't pull fishes out of hats. He does magic, proper magic, not stage shenanigans. That's a cool picture. Aquaman and his fishy friends. Now we fight back. No idea who those characters are. It looks a little bit about power, like Power Girl, but I don't think it is Power Girl. So maybe it is. I'm not sure though. And as for the rest of them, could that be Orion? Maybe he's an Atlantean sorcerer, isn't he? Hmm. Yeah. Aquaman 25. Uneasy hangs the head that wears the crown. Is not like an Alex. Is that an Alex Ross? Maybe no. Orbic, Orbic. It says there. It's got that kind of realistic -y kind of look to it, but no, a little bit different to Ross anyway. All right, Icebreaker. Uh, I think yeah. I think in this storyline, it was um, it was given a little bit like a retcon. He was like raised by dolphins or something, or yeah, for an early part of his life, dolphins ad adopted him. I believe. Yeah, and obviously one of them was killed. Like his dolphin mother was killed. Out of his depth. Possibly travelling to a, a deeper part. Quite often he'll go into a, an ocean trench which goes down for, for miles. And uh, yeah, he encounters all kinds of new things down there, new and terrible things. Right, this one guest stars Swamp Thing. Yeah, that's right. Cause I think I think after this run, the certain run after this, where he gets a new hand made out of water. And I'm wondering if that was something to do with maybe the blue. You know, like Swamp Thing is connected to the green, which is like all plant life or anywhere in the world. I think for a while, Aquaman becomes connected with the, maybe with, with the blue or something, and he gets a, like a better affin affinity with water. 
uh, that's how he's able to have a hand made of water basically uh, but this comes in the, the volume after this one might even, might even be in this box no it's not in this box because I did it on a previous uh, video so it's not in this box quite a lot of Aquaman though I need to put some covers on these maybe invest in a new box for them as well yeah I do like a bit of Aquaman normally pretty cool uh, pretty cool read good action Right, more Aquaman. Now, one of these runs of Aquaman, I, feel, I don't know if I've said it before, but it ends really, you know, it ends kind of like nicely. It might end up in this run. It's like a kid missing or he's run away and Aquaman hooks up with him, hooks up with one of his old villains uh, who's, who's turned, you know, straight, he's gone straight. And I think at the end of the, the episode, the end of the, the series, this, the whole thing... Um, he leaves, like he obviously leaves him with the kid, saying, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure he gets back to his uh, parents, whatever." Um, it all seemed like innocent and nice, and you know, like a like a cool kind of like ending. And then Hawkman come back a while later, and a, a Hawkman run uh, when he had some kind of like um, animal avatar power, and he was like the Hawk avatar was kind of like in charge of him, and there was one who was a Barracuda, and it was this super villain who in the last Aquaman was we're told had turned straight you know gone straight not turned straight but gone straight away from crime and it was saying oh it was a paedophile and it was like Ugh! and it put a whole new kind of turn on the fact that Aquaman left this kid behind with this villain I think it was called the scavenger or the fit or the angler or the fisherman something like that and like um I mean, I might be remembering it wrong, and it might have been a different villain that he left him with, and then, and then maybe when the, the villain in Hawkman wasn't that villain. But it was just like, oh, that's like, uh, <laughs> that's just wrong. That's a, what a way to, to turn like a like a, a nice story ending uh, from Aquaman into a horrific, terrible like connotations in the Hawkman book. It was just like, oh, that didn't didn't sit well with me. <laughs> Hopefully I'll get round to reading the runs again and I can I can check it out. I did try looking it up on the DC wiki actually because I was kind of like that is just that is you know did I remember this right or <laughs> right Aquaman 1 million looks like the same Aquaman to me doesn't look much changed right 50 a new reign begins yeah, run for a fair old while. Aquaman does have quite a few good long runs, actually, but like not like sustained. So it'll stop for a few, I don't know, a year or something, and then it'll start off with a whole new, you know, go again. All right, and then that's number 53. That's the end of this run, but we've got some annuals off it as well. Some annuals from this run. Number one from 1995. Number two from 1996. Number three from 1997 and number four from uh, 1998. Right, we've got a few flashes in this one as well. Oh, I've just seen. I thought I had a, I had a feeling this was going to be this was going to be this 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 pile. Oh, this is exciting. My my some of my earliest comics are coming up. Right, first we have Flashpoint and Elseworlds. Point at which a hero runs amok. The point at which power and madness meet. Flashpoint. I've shown you book two first. There's book one. <laughs> uh, and there's book two. And then there's book three. The end of the race. The final destination. Flashpoint. This is an Elseworlds story from 2000. So this is not the same Flashpoint that uh, for a while created a whole new uh, storyline, is it? Right, oh, this one of my oldest comics. This one, pretty sure this is 1979, March 1979. So I was still nine years old. So this must vie with my Brave and the Bolds as being the you know, the first comics that I bought. It's really weird though because I don't remember picking it up thinking, "Oh, my first comic when I picked it up." You know what I mean? It's you know, or not knowing who the Flash was, but I must have done, I suppose. Maybe, you know, just at the t I can't remember what my memories were at the time or what, what I was thinking at the time. Obviously, you know, all these years later, it feels like I've always known The Flash. But it must have been at some point I first picked up a Flash comic and this could have been it. 
I remember there, it's just, I thought it was really cool. Iris is coming in, he's all, he's all studded with, with bits of stone. Uh, we'll be late for the performance, Barry. What's keeping you? How I ever explain this to Iris? <laughs> I just love that. It's really cool. He's all, he's, I think he was trying to phase through a wall and something went wrong and he ended up with all these bits of rock phased into his body. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. And obviously I must have enjoyed it because I bought next month's one as well. These are just early ones that I remember buying. So this is, I'm pretty sure this is 1979, uh, March and April. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't move! Ha <laughs> ha I paralyzed the flash with sonic vibes. Those men will die. And as a nine year old boy, I'm like, oh my god, what's Flash gonna do? How's gonna, how, what's gonna, I've got, uh, I must buy this book. I have to find out what happened. Yeah. You know, that's, that's how it's, a, that's how to sell comics, guys. That's how to get kids into comics. All these flashy, bloody artwork covers that, you know, don't actually say anything or mean anything. Um, yeah, that's my, that's my opinion anyway. I think I must have quite liked Flash because I remember buying all these as a kid. Uh, that one's a good one as well. There's no way I can break loose from this psychic freak and it's going to continue draining the life energy from my body until I die. Uh, I've added that bit for the special effect. But yeah, that was like, oh, what's happening to Flash? I must buy it. Yeah, and this is the same guy, the, the next issue. That's a bit weird. Stop meddling and buzz off, Flash. I'm doing just fine. This obviously beauty is taming the beast there. Here's another one that I remember buying back in the day. It's like, oh, mystery. How can Mr. Element be fighting Dr. Alchemy when they're both alter egos of Al Desmond? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how it's possible. I have to buy the comic to find out. And that's what I did. <laughs> right, let me leap forward to 310. I'm pretty sure I bought this one at a later time because I don't remember picking this up as a kid. I think I must have bought this, you know, well in the future. Uh, yeah, again. 332, and I got jumps again to 344. I think this must be just after he killed um, the Reverse Flash. Wasn't this around the time he killed Reverse Flash? But uh, I think that, that, that one might have been worth some money, but... Uh, yeah, I doubt any of these are. Got some annuals though. Nice first annual from 1987. Uh, annual number two from 1988. Annual number three from 89. Uh, number four from 91. And then we've got a bit of a jump, a bit of a gap. I'm wondering if these might have been in another box in one of the previous videos I did, maybe. We go straight to number seven now. An Elseworlds Flash Annual. Uh, number eight. Yeah, I get a feeling there might be in another box somewhere because I'm pretty sure um, you've got the Bloodlines Annuals. I think I might have all the Bloodlines Annuals together. The Eclipso Annuals, I think those might all be together as well. And the, what was the other one? Bloodlines, Eclipso. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, that's an annoying now. Uh, annoying myself. Eclipso. Bloodlines. If it comes in my head, I'll mention it. I, I, do you know what? Because it's really annoying. Because I kind of like had it in my head. I thought I had it in my head before I was about to say it. And then when it comes to actually saying it, I've forgotten it again. Right, number nine is missing as well. Ten, number eleven. Okay, so there's some there's some annuals. Right, sixty-four page giant special, Speed Force, number one. Oh, and here we have Flashy's tribute to Julius Schultz. Stop! Don't pass up this issue. My life depends on it. Hmm. Flash plus Nightwing. Yeah. The all new Flash TV special. Is this the one that Daz has got signed by the uh, the actor? We have a 50th anniversary Flash special here. An 80 page giant celebrating the fastest men alive from 1990. And we have Green Lantern, The New Core. Book one. Bunch of new people. Book two. 
Can't say I remember any of these particularly. I don't know if any of them died. Is that she's not an Earth woman, is she? I'm sure she's not an Earth woman. I don't remember. I don't remember her. Well, I'm sure I did some Green Lantern core uh, quarterlies already. Or maybe it was Green Lantern quarterlies, and these are Green Lantern core quarterlies. So one. This is the last little batch. One, two. Yeah, I do like these. I like these kind of giant 64 page giants these ones with like you know a number of self-contained stories it's like yeah nice nice i like them <laughs> i like the precious comics <laughs> number four number five number six Number seven. Number eight. Lobo to me. Lobo to me. Lobo, Lobo to me. <laughs> yes, very good. Okay, finishing up, we have the Green Lantern special from 1988. Uh, I'm guessing something to do with South Africa. Apartheid is racism. End apartheid. Spoiler alert. They do. <laughs> but not necessarily in this comic. But just in, in real life they managed to do it. Um, oh, this is a Green Lantern special number two. So... Hmm. They're a year apart though. I don't know if they're actually running concurrently. It's, it's not going to be the same story. Uh, the same writer though. Yeah, it's a bit of an odd one, that. As well, as well as the quarterlies, they have a yearly special as well. And then, on its own, the only one I seem to have, and the very last comic in this batch, Tales of the Green Lantern Core, number two. There you are. Don't seem to have any more of those. At least I don't think I do anyway. So that's it. That's this box. Uh, thanks for uh, thanks for checking it out with me, guys. And uh, yeah, I'll be back next week with some more comics to look at and some more inane babbling to uh, to titillate your ears with. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. Cheers for watching. Bye.